Okay, so moving onwards now towards the right hand side. So I need a color change. Okay, I'm going from my darker pencils, my blues and purples to more of these warmer browns. So I'm, I'm using a scrap of paper to check my colors against. Don't just blindly try and pick out one by looking at the tip of the pencil or even worse looking at the back color of the pencil and thinking that's going to be dead on exactly right. Test your pencils on some scrap paper and the newer you are to draw in and you can do this with your paintings as well the more you should definitely be testing. Now the colors don't need to be exact okay so don't get overly overly critical that these colors have got to be exactly the same as the reference photo it doesn't need to be because a slightly different time of day perhaps a cloud may come over or, or whatever and the colors will change slightly or dramatically so i'm just checking out here the, from the set that i've got my pencils which colors are going to be suitable for the darks which colors for the lights for the warmer colors and i'm checking and just seeing which ones are most accurate from my set now if you've already done a color swatch and you know put the colors from your pencils onto some paper you can then look at that instead or as well as okay you can easily check then what colors you've got rather than rummaging all through your pencils and i've got a video matching color on Patreon and on YouTube that goes through that process 45 minutes long and if you haven't seen it I urge you to to watch it because it'll really show you an easy way to get realism and match colors in your drawings and your paintings. So I'm just after the general color now on this warm side. I'm not looking at the highlights okay I'm not necessarily looking at it being too dark either. I'm just getting that general color. If I then need to darken areas to put darker textures, I can do that on top. If I, because then finally the highlights go on top. Now brighten it all, all up a lot. Now here on that bridge of the nose where the sunlight hits, that's got to be really a nice vibrant orange color and then up here it goes a little darker it's only when I put the real bright highlights that that area will you know really come to life and start to look more realistic and have that shape form three-dimensional appearance to it I'm just going to soften this area. I don't want much blending up here. I quite like the texture of the paper showing through in places. It's adding to it. Okay, so if you if it's working and it's looking good, then don't go in with a paper stump and blend it away to nothing. If it's looking good with that paper texture as well and it's helping, just use your fingers to kind of bed the pastel in. I'm just coming over here with some dark texture. You see I'm quite random with the strokes. You look at the reference folder, you can see the haze are going in lots of different directions. So just getting these dark elements in. Now on the muzzle, on this darker side notice how much blue is in there now you may not expect to see blue we know the muscle muzzle around the nose area is really pretty white quite bright but because we've got that extreme lighting effect on there there's a lot of blues and purples on the shadow side and it all looks real you look at the reference photo it looks real so if we can get it close to that the drawing will look real as well so don't let your eye be fooled by knowing that the nose mouth muzzle area is white and just reaching for white and putting it in actually look at the colors that you've got that's where matching the colors with a scrap of paper really comes in handy because that shows you the true color 
okay now I'm using a smaller paper stump to blend in here because I want this smooth we can see small little black dots dark blue dots in there but I can put those on after in general this area needs to be smooth that's why I'm using the paper stump because it blends thoroughly now we can add some more colors get some more realism on top Now, when I'm adding the texture of the fur, I'm starting off just slightly lighter. Okay, I'm not jumping straight away to my brightest highlights. The fur, remember, as I say in most of my videos, on most animals, the fur has got depth to it. It's not just one layer of fur over skin. It's multiple, multiple layers of fur and hair that's layered over the top and going in slightly different directions as well it may all go in one general direction but unless the animal is completely brushed um, then it's going in different directions slightly different directions so that's what i need to do to simulate that i need to make my pencil strokes overlap and be do multiple layers on top at least three layers so it's general color the dark textures and then the highlights on top okay now it could be two layers of dark textures two layers of highlights whatever's needed but that's the general uh, process that I'm doing now around here same kind of process it's the same thing but different colors okay gradually going lighter and lighter and that's what's creating now the highlights that's creating the effect of sunlight, just catching some of the haze, but not all of them. You control the width of the mark by the sharpness of the pencil. Okay, so if I want a sharp, very hard edged looking mark, fine detail, then I'd use a sharper pencil. If I want it to be a softer mark, I can use a blunter pencil. Now with pastels we've got that benefit of being able to put a light over the dark and that makes it a lot lot easier when you're drawing fur and a lot quicker too. So I work in an extremely similar manner when I'm doing oil paint ends. It's ex almost exactly the same process but instead of using a pencil I'm using a brush so anybody that's used to painting in that fashion putting light over the dark will really find pastels very intuitive now when it's details coming on top that's when the pencil tip is just slightly sharper so the, the important part to look at here is that you can see my light tones going on top of the darker under layer so if you, if you know you've got the tone, the color correct for the upper layer and it's not showing, showing up when you're using the pencil, then it's probably because you've gone too light on the under layer. These lights that I'm putting on top will only show up when they're going on top of something that's darker than them. Okay, so with this kind of purpley color this muted purple color I'm putting on now a gray gray purple if the under layer was already this color this tone okay so that tone the lightness and darkness if it was this color and tone and I was putting it on top it's just like putting another layer on top and you wouldn't see it you're only seeing this because the under layer is that bit darker now how dark should you go well look at the area on the reference photo in between the highlights so that's what you would want to, to to put on as the first layer it doesn't need to be exact don't go fretting about the exact color tone required for the under layer don't worry as you're drawing and you know you're a beginner just get something a bit darker down there's a lot of leeway in all of this as far as colors and tones as well you don't absolutely don't need to be exact with things to make it work 
when I finish this drawing, it won't be exactly the same as the reference photo. There's areas that I wanted to change and there's areas where I may not have had the exact pencil colour or pastel colour. Okay, so I've made do with what I do have and that will be good enough. You don't need a set of 300 pencils and the full set of pan pastels. You, you match the colour to the best of your ability and to the best of the supplies you've got. Okay, and that will be good enough. Remember, the animal in a slightly different light would be different colours. Now, as I'm putting on these marks, I'm putting them in random directions. We don't want the donkey to look like it's gone to the grooming parlour and been brushed. I want this kind of roughness and natural appearance on these hairs on top. So I'm studying the reference photo. I can see the kind of direction and the way it's changing direction as well. And I'm roughly going in the directions that I'm seeing. And once again, that's good enough. You don't have to get it exactly, exactly right. I'm always after really the essence of the animal rather than a duplication of a photo. And that saves me a lot of time. If I was trying to duplicate the photo so it looks exactly the same, rather than spending three and a half hours on this drawing, I'd probably be spending 30 hours and most likely it wouldn't look exactly like it anyway. And who cares? Okay, most people, they're not gonna see the reference photo as well. Now here's one of those big benefits of pastels. I can put these hairs on top now of the dark underlayer. You see, I can bring them over the eye. Comes around, kind of shape bends around here. And I'll put more highlights on here as well. So I'll build these layers up. I'm just getting the initial position of that fur. 